Happy Wednesday, my dudes. Okay, well, this is week two. Um, we have some stuff to go over. Um, I have a video that I'm going to share with you that uh, is a YouTube video. Um, I also have a video that I'm sharing with you that's uh, Liam's demonstration, which is really cool. He did a great job. Lots of people, uh, several people, I shouldn't say lots, several people submitted their videos and uh, Liam did a super job. And so I'm going to share his with you guys. That way you can see um, firsthand somebody else doing the three demonstrations. Uh, we're going to talk about them right now so that uh, those of you who may not have had the... Um, the resources or you know maybe you didn't have the cups or maybe you didn't have the water or the bucket or whatever whatever the case may be you didn't do the three de demonstrations or maybe you did the three demonstrations you're like I don't get it what's the point of this we're gonna go over that right now okay so if uh, I'm gonna put up uh, my notes so what I write down you should write down in your notebook so you don't if you don't have your notebook out already go ahead and pause me and get your notebook out <clears throat> So whatever I write down, you write down, just like it is on the whiteboard at school. Okay, so notes for today, 422.20. We have uh, our first demonstration. You'll see on the notes that I wrote, demo one, and then I drew a bucket with water in it. And then I drew a picture of the cup at the bottom of the bucket. You'll see that the cup is fully submersed in the water. So it's all the way down to the bottom of the water. The water is over the um, the rim of the cup. Okay, you ha you'll see that there's a little bunch of something down at the bottom of the cup. That was my paper towel, so I stuck my paper towel in the in the cup, put it all the way down to the bottom of the water, and I held it there. When I held it there, then I noticed um, that the air and the water shifted. Okay, so above water, the um, the cup was full of air. It was never empty like some people may say I'll show you my shirt in a few minutes and it says the same thing um, so you have above water the cup is full of air and it has the paper towel at the bottom put it inside the bucket and what happens to the water the water goes over the rim and into the cup filling the cup up and where does the air go it doesn't just disappear it rushes out and rises okay so that's demonstration one. The air went out of the cup, the water went into the cup, and what did we notice about the water level? Well, when you push the, the cup down to the bottom, the water level is the same from the start as it is uh, after the water has already entered the cup. So the water level at the end of this experiment is should be the same as what it is at the beginning. Very similar to what it is at the beginning. Okay. So water displacement, very little to none. Okay, demo two. You had the same cup, or you had a, you could use the same cup. Same cup, dry uh, paper towel, shove the paper towel at the bottom of the cup, flip the cup upside down this time rather than right side up, and you submerse the cup into the bucket of water. Well, what do we find? Our findings were that the air stayed at stayed in the cup so it had it was not able to escape the cup so the air was stuck in the cup what about the water did the water take over the same space as the cup no the water was actually held off by the air it could not take up the same space so the water stayed out of the cup okay but this one is a little bit different now looking at the water levels of the bucket or the jar or whatever it might be you'll notice that this time the water levels rose. So if you were to have uh, drawn a line at the beginning of, before you put the uh, cup upside down into the cup, into the bucket, you would have uh, one line. And then after you put the cup inside the bucket, you're going to notice that that water line rose. It's actually higher. We displaced water. Why did we displace water? Okay, we're adding air to the bucket, therefore it's taking up space, therefore it's pushing the water level higher. Okay, let's go to demonstration three. On demonstration three, we had um, the cup. We're also going to put it upside down. We punched a hole in the bottom of the cup this time. That was the difference. That was 
the dependent variable, one thing that we're changing, or the independent variable, sorry, the one thing that we're changing. Um, we put a dry paper towel at the bottom of the cup. Um, then now we're going to put the cup inside the, um, the bucket. Drop it all the way down to the bottom of the bucket. Well, last time without the hole in it, we noticed that we displaced water and that we had an air bubble like inside that cup. Well, this time you're going to notice, or you would have noticed, that we have bubbles rising from the bottom of the cup. Well, the air escaped this time through the hole at the bottom of the cup. So the air gradually left the cup and the water slowly filled the cup this time. So after leaving it in even 10 seconds, you're gonna notice that, that the water line within the cup rose, the air exited the cup, rising, and you'll know, also notice that the water level it initially rose like it did on uh, demo two, but then it gradually goes back down to its original. So the air is not taking up space within um, the air is escaping, therefore it doesn't have it doesn't take up any more space in the water because it left. Okay, so let's go to our the next one. Okay, so does air have volume? Okay, well, what is volume? We define volume as being um, volume measures how much space something takes up. That's what, how we're going to define it this year. Okay, it is it more specific than that? As you get into like high school and stuff, they're going to tell you more specifics about it. But this is what you need to know and have an understanding of for now. Yeah, we have evidence that it took up space. Look at the water level lines. Each time uh, when we had that air that was trapped inside the cup on demonstration number two, we noticed that the water level actually rose, right? That would be evidence, something that we could see that would tell us, yeah, well, when air is stuck inside the water, the water level rose, therefore it was displacing it, it was taking up space. Um, could water and air be in the same exact space at the same time? No, if that were the case, then we would have had that uh, the water inside that cup every single time. Uh, as soon as it went underwater, then that the water would have taken up the space every single time, but it didn't. Okay, so you see our answer? No, the air was pushed out by the water whenever possible. When the air was trapped inside the cup, it wasn't possible for it to escape, therefore it was stuck in there. So whenever possible, it's gonna get out. Okay, things that have volume. Well, puppies have volume. You can't just walk th straight through a puppy. Uh, if you were to try to walk through a puppy, you're gonna kick a puppy and that would be a bad thing. So don't kick puppies. Okay, what about water? Does water take up space? Can you walk through water? You can walk through water, but you're displacing it. So you're not really walking through it, you're pushing it out of the way. So yeah, water has volume. What about cahil? Does cahil have volume? Can we walk through cahil? No. If you walk, if you attempt to walk through cahil, then you are going to run into him and he will probably push you down because he's a big strong guy. Don't suggest that. Okay, so um, those are a couple examples of things that have volume. Okay, does air have volume? Yes, air has volume. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, what about mass? We've talked about uh, volume and mass, I believe, before, but um, so this is just a quick overview. Does air have mass? Okay, well, what exactly is mass? When I'm asking you, does it have mass? Well, this is what mass is. The mass is the amount of stuff something contains. So if you turn on to page 31, you're going to see that same exact um, definition, and it's going to get a little more specific. But this is these are the basics. Um, the amount of stuff something contains. Okay, I have a YouTube video that I want you to watch. So um, I'm going to see if I can embed it into this video. If I can't, then go ahead and pause, and then I have the video. The air does have mass. Okay, examples of things that have mass. A bowling ball, you can hold a ball, bowling ball and, be, and feel the weight of it. So that's a good example of um, something that has mass. An iPad, you can hold your iPad. You guys all hold your iPad. You walk around with them and probably live on them right now. So yeah, you'll notice that it does have mass. It does have a weight, not much weight, but it does have weight. 
uh, Hunter's bike. Hunter's bike has weight. He's been doing some pretty awesome tricks. I'm gonna have him. I'm gonna post one of his pictures because he he sent me a picture that was a. Uh, it had to do with air quality or something, but it was an awesome picture. It was so impressive. So I'll go ahead and post that for you guys because you're going to be impressed too. Um, okay, and last but not least, last thing I want you to write down is matter. Okay, we've talked about both uh, mass and volume. Well, for something to be considered uh, as being matter, defined as being matter, it has to have both mass and volume. So if we were talking about Hunter's Bike, does Hunter's bike have mass? It, does it weigh something? Yes, it does. It doesn't weigh a whole lot because he has a specialty bike and stuff so that he can do all his cool tricks. But yes, it does have a mass to it. Okay, uh, what about volume? Does it take up space or can you walk right through it? Well, if you ask Hunter, I'm sure he's tried to walk through his bike before <laughs> and he will only get bruises. So no, you cannot just walk through the bike. Therefore, since you can't walk through it, you can't push just through it, you can't be in that same exact space at the same time, then it has both mass and volume, therefore it is matter. So that would be one example of matter. So now that we've done this, you have one last task to do this week that I uh, am asking of you, um, and that would be to fill out your create your explanation worksheet. Um, you'll see it right now. Uh, I've already filled out some of the fields. I've uh, given you hints as to what to write in each of the different boxes. Um, the first box, it asks you to um, describe what you did in your experiment. So the experiment that you conducted was the three demonstrations. So what did you use and what were you doing with it? So we had a jar, we had some water, we had some cups, and we had dry paper towels, put them at the top of the cups, and we sunk the cups. That's basically all you have to write. So, in that first box, I just told you what to write. Write it in your own words. Excuse me. Write it in your own words, but that's what you write. Claim. I already wrote your claim for you. Air is matter. Okay, so now you are going to write down the evidence. What did you see that told you that air is matter? Okay. Science knowledge, there are two terms that you're going to define, well actually three terms that you're going to define, matter, mass, and volume. I wrote those, started you out on those right there. And then uh, last, it, you're going to write everything that you wrote in the claim, the science knowledge, and the evidence down in that bottom box. It makes one really nice paragraph and then you're done. All you have to, and then you just submit that document. Okay, well you guys have a great week and I will talk to you later.